My name is Cynthia Rea. I'm an RN here at Imperavalli Radiation Oncology. We do only radiation therapy here um, for our cancer patients here in the Valley. We're the only one here loca located within Imperial Valley. Um, and my role basically is to help the patients. I could do a lot of patient education, um, help them with symptom management, you know, those kinds of things. Um, from what I see, the most part is first they're scared, you know, cancer. Um, number one, that's scary. Then they hear radiation and nobody really is familiar with radiation. They've heard of chemo, not so much radiation, and they imagine the worst. Um, so then, you know, that's, they already come in like that. And then a lot of times they have issues with, you know, transportation or support at home or different kinds of things. And so there's just a lot of challenges just with the diagnosis in itself and then the hurdles of how are they gonna do treatment. Um, I find that CRCD is very uh, beneficial to our patients. So I end up referring all of our patients, um, I at least give them the flyer. So even if they say they have issues or no issues, I at least give them the flyer. Um, but the hurdles, a lot of them is because our treatment is Monday through Friday. So they have a lot of, you know, their life obligations. You know, how are they going to get here Monday through Friday? Um, if they're not working, then they are financially, you know, impacted by just having to get here back and forth, whether they're coming from Hero Centro, Calexico, they come from all over. Um, so there's that issue. Um, a lot of times they don't have uh, support or you know someone at home that is well versed in the medical field. So they're trying to navigate you know what all of these different tests that they're doing. What do they mean? Um, how important is it? Do they need to you know do something? Um, sometimes I find that they try to get out of doing a certain test because they might have to have like a life obligation and they're trying to balance what is more of a priority over their health. So with CRCD, I find that when I talk to them and tell them, look, you know, there's this fabulous group of people and they're gonna help you navigate and understand this diagnosis. Um, they're gonna help you look for resources. And I always tell them, I don't know what they can plug you into um, because it, you know, it's a case by case. But um, in my experience, I have found that they help them with, you know, finding rides or finding time. Um, support groups, all sorts of things. So I think it's really invaluable to send them to CRCD just because they help them, I think, wrap their head around the whole diagnosis and how they're going to do it and, you know, kind of make a plan and execute it. So I just, I tell everyone, you need to go there. You need to go see these people. I would say it's extremely unique, very, very unique. Um, as a matter of fact, the other day, one of the patients was asking about their insurance and um, they were having difficulty, I think, in authorizations or whatever it is. And so that brought a question to my mind. I thought, well, are these people over there, you know, are they also insurance brokers or how do they know? Are they just very knowledgeable? And they're just very knowledgeable. I mean, this is just, they're very well versed. It's um, unheard of. Other places that I've lived at, I've never seen a service like this to this extent. Um, and especially with the care that they do, you know, you're not just a number with them. Um, you know, so I think it's very unique. It's very special. A patient comes to us, um, you know, and in our consultation or talking um, with the patient history, that's kind of how I clue into different needs that they might need. Um, so then I'll ask them, um, you know, hey, can I go ahead and refer you over to this group? Sometimes they say yes, they're very, you know, happy to do it. Sometimes they're hesitant. They kind of don't believe, you know, oh, is it really free? They think it's a catch. Um, so what I end up doing is I'll just get the information together. I'll fax it over. I'll email one of the gals, um, and, you know, somebody and I'll say, um, hey, I have this patient. And what I'm seeing is that they're very nervous about, you know, um, the gas or transportation or rides or those kinds of things. And then um, I kind of just pass it over to them and the patient ends up going with them. When they come back again, I'll ask them, well, how did it go over there? Cause I always like to see, you know, what did it, what benefit did they get from this? And um, they always tell me, you know, even worst case scenario, if there was no services that they could provide based on a particular situation, they're always very happy to talk with them um, listen to them and get the encouragement, but for the most part, you know, that's more unique if there isn't anything they can do. 
But for the most part, they say, well, actually, yes, you know, all of my transportation is set up. Um, you know, they'll have me send, print out their entire schedule. So most patients come for average, I think, 25, 30 treatments, Monday through Friday. The shorter courses are five or 10, and then we have some that are up to 40, but you know, on average around there. So they'll have all of that already set up. Um, if, if it isn't, you know, the transportation is set up, they have their little sheet with the mileage reimbursement and it's not just to our clinic when I'm signing it, I notice it's like to all other doctors. Um, so that's a huge relief for them. Um, few patients have even told me that they didn't necessarily benefit from the transportation end of it, but what they ended up doing is finding some other grants or, or savings. Um, I think one of them was like for the power, you know, I think they were able to lower a bill for the electric bill and then that money in turn could go into going into transportation so i mean they're just very savvy at finding different ways on how to help them and you know get it through the treatment excellent excellent um i kind of want to go to now uh, a kind of different line of questions where i uh, kind of talking more about the emotional feelings mm. of doing this type of job um so in, 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 your, in your profession uh, helping uh, patients get chemotherapy how emotional do you get when you see a patient go through this? Very. Um, sometimes it's very hard. Uh, you know, we become we become close. You know, like I mentioned, they come every day, Monday through Friday. Sometimes they come short, you know, a couple of weeks. Sometimes it's longer, but always we get to know them. Uh, we get to know their personal struggle and how they're coping, um, you know, different things that they're dealing in their home life. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of things going on in their home life. So it is, it is a balancing act of, you know, being there professionally. Of course, we can't get all emotional with them because we're there to guide them and help them. Um, but you definitely do emphasize and feel the, you know, just the struggle, the impact of what they're going through and just, you know, being scared, you know, most of anything else is they're just scared. It's like, I have cancer you know, and, and what's the future going to look like for me. So, you know, sometimes I do, I try not to take it home, but you know, sometimes I do have the, it comes home with me and I do feel, you know, pretty sad. I think about the patients and their, their struggle. Um, for the most part, you know, I try to just, you know, I enjoy gardening, painting, um, my family, you know, um, a lot of times I think about the blessings that I have. So, um, I'll think about, you know, gosh, look at, you know, my life is, is okay. I, I have my health. I have my family. I have all these things. And, um, I just got to appreciate and be in the moment and be present and, you know, just be mindful. So I just try to do those things and, you know, just try to be a little bit active and go outdoors, get some sun, those kinds of things. I've seen some, a lot of them are like tremendously changed as far as their stress. You know, they, they come in and they just don't even know how they're going to make it all fit together. Um, they'll go over there and get all of the services plugged in and, you know, they come back again. And I feel that they have just like a huge burden that has been lifted and they can just kind of focus and throw themselves into getting through treatment and not have to worry so much about all of the logistics of it. Um, so I've seen a huge benefit in, in a change in them. You know, they come in with a kind of a stoic face, you know, trying to just hold it all together. And then they come back again, you know, and they're just like, oh yeah, there's some relief there. Well, I would definitely um, give a shout out to all the donors and encourage more people to donate just to keep the services going. Um, you know, where we live in this community, we have a lot of, unfortunately, poverty um, we have a lot of, you know, low literacy. There's just a lot of hurdles here. Um, so if people can find it in their hearts to donate in, you know, $5, $10, whatever you got, you know, it, they, it'll make a difference.